What's going on guys? It is Brian and Jack with some men's comics and this is probably one of my favorite videos of the week. This is where the rubber meets the road. This isn't the sexy video. This is the reader's video. That's right. We're talking about those trade paperback recommendations for this week where we're giving you a trade paperback suggestion for each major publisher and a wild card pick from Jack and I also, right? That's right. And th this is one of my favorite shows as well, Brian, because we get to talk about something that is really needed in the community right now. So many of us are stuck inside, uh, really looking to fill our time. Everybody's tired of watching TV, streaming services and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's a great time to catch up on some of those stories that you may have missed, as well as a great way to support your local comic shop. Yeah, and it's great because you've got trade paperbacks. So you got that nice bite-sized chunk, either an arc or a couple issues, all the way up to a full volume, which could contain a full story. And you can even go into, we don't talk about them that much so far, except for when Jack cheated. But you got also the omnibuses also that we get into every now and then. But we're going to get into this week's recommendations, start with our Marvel book. We are talking about that Spider-Verse trade paperback. Yeah, that's right. I really love this story. Um, you know, Amazing Spider-Man has really kind of been hit or miss over the last several years. Um, it's been a long time since that title was really in demand, but there was a moment in time when really the Amazing Spider-Man title was capturing everything within the comic market from reader buzz to secondary market buzz. And it was really the induction of this Spider-Verse story coming on the heels of that uh, Edge of the Spider-Verse five issue miniseries that saw a bunch of one shots with these, you know, kind of out there spider characters. And it seems so silly to talk about now because of course we've seen the animated film. We, we're all familiar with the Spider-Verse, but this was the story that brought that in. And uh, you know, this Dan Slott story is kind of like, that's going to be his calling card, I really believe, going beyond for, for the you know, foreseeable future. Um, and it's a great time to get on this story. Um, there's two different great ways to buy this book. You can either grab volume one where you just get the Amazing Spider-Man part of the story, which really kicks it off and starts it if you just kind of want to, you know, stick your feet in the pool a little bit. Um, but there's also a great collected edition. You can get it in paperback for like $32 um, that has not just the Amazing Spider-Man part of the story, but Spider-Man 2099, uh, you know, Silk and Scarlet Spider and every other spider story. Uh, that encompass the entire Spider-Verse story, as well as the miniseries uh, completely included within this book. And I think that's a great way to digest it. It kind of gives you almost like an omnibus feel, but for only $32. Right, and again, for this one and all the other ones, we always say support your LCS first, but we will also have Amazon links to all these in the description of this video as well. So check that out, you can get them, or even check out used bookstores and check your local library as well. But either way, moving on from Marvel into the DC recommended book this week, and we're talking about that. They got a movie adaption going on for this right now with Robert Pattinson becoming a Batman. A lot of people don't like him, but hey, I'm all about giving them a shot. And we're talking about that Batman Long Halloween. Yeah, classic, classic Batman story, a great detective story, um, and one that has been a favorite amongst Batman readers, but maybe isn't as well known as several of the more modern Batman stories. So this is one that I think a lot of people who are modern Batman readers, they may not have gotten a chance to read. And if you really want to get excited for this upcoming Batman movie the way that I am, I really encourage you to check this book out. Because to me, this is the type of story that I like with Batman. It's, it's a detective story. You, you're, you're not just dealing with an immediate villain. I don't want to spoil anything about this story, but you get to see the whole rogues gallery of villains. It's a bit of a whodunit, um, and there's some twists and turns. So I like the idea of, before you get a chance to watch that movie, give this a read, uh, if, especially if you are on the fence about the, the upcoming movie. If you were negative about the, the casting or um, director choice or what, whatever it is, uh, this is a great way to uh, kind of see if you're going to get as excited as I am. Right, and then we're going to go over to Image Comics. We're going to talk about Die Volume 1. This is a fantastic book. A lot of people, this book got popular also because there was rumor news of Option or Netflix show or anything like that. But I want to take all that, set it aside, and the purpose of this show is it's a great freaking story. If you like Dungeons & Dragons or role-playing games or you like Jumanji, this is the book for you. Fantastic story and even better, one of my favorite artists, Stephanie Hans. Beautiful art, beautiful cover art, all in one volume right here. I love this book. What do you say, Jack? Yeah, 
Me too. And if and if you at all had heard people like us talk about this story and the investment potential of it, you got to understand that a lot of that comes from reading this book and then getting excited about it. So if you want to check it out and see what made us so excited, this is a great opportunity to do so. The other thing I'd like to point out is the affordability of this book. It's one of those kind of uh, inexpensive image trades. So you're talking about like a $9.99 cover price. It's available on Amazon for like $6.59. So you know, how can you beat that? It's, 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 it's very inexpensive to sit down and read one of the best stories of the last year. Boom from image, but sticking into that small press, we go to boom studios. There's another great story in bone parish volume one as well. If you like those great Southern new Orleans stories, this is a great one for you. We got, they're making drugs out of people's bones. And then they like experience some, they have like an experience from the person that the bones were made out of, right? Fantastic story. It's got some mob, mob boss going on in there, some takeover, some drugs. It's out there, but fantastic nonetheless. Right, a little Southern noir kind yeah. of uh, horror crime suspense. Um, great story. Uh, yeah, it's like Mardi Gras Sopranos. Yeah, Cullen Bunn at his, uh, at his finest and an important book to be talking about right now with the current first look deal between Netflix and Boom Studios. I, I definitely think that this is a title that you're going to hear talked about in, in the coming future. So if you didn't get a chance to read this book, like I was actually late to this. Uh, it was the viewers of the Bolo show, the weekly Bolo show, who kept telling me like, oh, you got to be reading Bone Parish. And I got on it late and it was amazing. I love it. Um, so volume one, you can get on Amazon, $10.58. Uh, great, great pickup. But We've got a giveaway for you today. We have a volume one of Bone Parish to give away, trade paperback, and the best part, it is signed by creator Cullen Bunn. All you've got to do is comment in the comment section and let us know what Boom Studios title you think would be the best one to see in Netflix in the future. Yeah, and then on top of that, do that comment, but also be on the lookout on this channel because we have a top 10 boom books that we like and that video is coming shortly very soon imminent wouldn't you say oh yes yes right around the corner so if you aren't make sure you're subscribed and click that bell notification so you get notified when that video hits but moving from boom over to idw i'm loving the list this week this is another great one that just came out within the past year or so and we are talking about road of Bones. If you like those horror comics, here we have that gulag, escape from a gulag type prison. And was it Siberia, right? And they had this. Yes. Road of Bones is a real thing, by the way. They actually call it Road of Bones. But we got like a supernatural horror in this great miniseries, perfect for a trade paperback. And love this story. I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, and another one that's been rumored for option. Um, it was kind of part of that like run that IDW went on with creator owned. IDW is so well known for their uh, kind of like uh, properties that they they produce comics for. Think Disney or Nickelodeon or Hasbro. But this is part of you know their, their creator owned series where we had like Canto um, and. Uh, you, several others that, that came out in a very short period of time. And this was a big hit. We went to late printings and it's one that I think kind of caught people off guard. So I know a lot of people didn't get a chance to read this uh, upon it hitting the new release shelf. So great opportunity. Uh, looks like $17.99 for the trade paperback. Uh, you're getting kind of like a complete story here. So one to check out, one to be on the lookout for. And I know one that's got Brian excited. He was excited as soon as this one dropped. Oh yeah, this one. Um, and Bone Parish is one that I picked up just because I liked the cover when it came out and I was happy I read that but this this list is like hit me right in the feels this week and especially this next one we're going to talk about over on our indie pick this one comes from Vault this is kind of one of the books that introduced me to Vault and we are talking about Alien Bounty Hunter now you hear us talk about Canto on the show a lot you hear us talk about that writer David Boer well he actually wrote Alien Bounty Hunter as well with Adrian Wassel and this also has Mark Wahlberg involved from the very beginning. So I keep saying it's only a matter of time before this book has to be coming some way, right, with Mark Wahlberg in it. Whenever people talk about Vault, we always talk about Wasted Space. We talk about their newer titles that people are used to. I always go back and ask them, have you read Alien Bounty Hunter? And if they say no, I highly recommend reading this story. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's another one with a, a lot of option uh, rumors surrounding it. Uh, it's another one where I think people are going to hear about this. And, you know, it's a great time to kind of get up on these things early, especially coming from indie comics. It's impossible to keep up with every indie title. It, it, this is one that... I missed initially upon it coming out and it wasn't until kind of later on reading around the time of these savage shores and you were talking about this title that I got up on it and uh, it, it was really before the whole Canto thing and I even became aware so it was cool once we started uh, getting excited about Canto and realizing that David Boer had wrote both titles but this one's available right now on Amazon for $19.99 um, it's one to be on the lookout for it's it's also one of the books I know Vault was doing the like the number ones for free uh, uh, online digital. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for if you want to kind of test out and see if, you know, this is for you. So those are our recommendations so far. We've given you a Marvel, DC, Boom, Image, IDW, and an indie pick. So now we get into our weekly wildcard picks. Jack went first last week, so I'm going to go first this week. And my wildcard pick for this week is going to be Preacher. I love this story. I didn't mind the AMC adaption. The first season was great. The second season, eh, but either way, the book is way better than the show. I understand it's hard to adapt, but you can get this two ways. You have, On Amazon right now, you can get issues 1 through 12 in paperback for $12 or a hardcover, or you can get issues 1 through 26 in a big hardcover volume one on the book style. That's 90 bucks. but either way, Garth Ennis, if you like crazy, I mean, out there, but damn good stories, definitely read Preacher. A lot of kind people out there already read this and can tell you the same thing i don't know anyone that's read it that hasn't liked it jack no no and it, it's an absolute classic to me this is also one of those trades if you're if you're someone like me um i take part in every area of comic books from reselling to collecting um to reading and one of the things that i've done over the years is kind of started to build a trade paperback library of kind of classic trades that you got to have and preachers one of those ones you just have to have it um if you're going to start doing that it, and by the way i suggest doing it it's, it's really an enjoyable uh thing to do uh it's kind of a different thing in the hobby collecting trades rather than uh uh single issues it, it, it's a more fun you do you there's more enjoyment in it and it's great because it's almost like evangelical to comic people right if people right. are talking about comics they don't know and they're like oh man you want a good book to read and then you just give them a, give them a trade and be like hey check this out and then next exactly. thing you know, like that was good i didn't realize comics were like that right so the and this is one of those books this is one of those books where you can really expose somebody to a story that may catch them off guard and they they're like wow i didn't realize this is what a comic book was like preacher is a prime example <laughs> come back man that book is effed up yeah <laughs> but there's my wild card jack what's your wild card pick this week well, I'm often asked when we're talking about Valiant Comics, what is my suggested reading for Valiant? Because, of course, Valiant Comics is a company that spans back um, decades. And it's always tough when you're kind of getting into a new universe, right? We're all used to Marvel, DC. Um, we are familiar with those characters. Yeah, and I remember more for like those Nintendo type comics. Right. And so people have those different memories of Valiant and they have kind of there's which character do you jump in, which book. Um, and it, the truth is, it really doesn't matter. But the modern day Valiant, uh, the rebooted Valiant that came under Dinesh Sham Dasani, um, the, one of the kind of edicts of that company was that no matter what kind of arc you picked up, what uh, what new run of a character you picked up, it, it was written in a way where a completely new reader could jump on board. And that's something that I really think was smart by Valiant and deliberate. Uh, and one such kind of turning point for the company was the miniseries, The Valiant. Uh, this, this told the story um, of the Eternal Warrior and, and what the Eternal Warrior was and what it means to the Valiant universe. It told about the Geomancer, um, the Book of Death, uh, and this all kind of led into uh, a few other miniseries, but this is a great, great story uh, to kind of begin. I like the way that it's told. Um, it kind of brings you into some action, but it, it, the entire time you're reading it, it explains things. This is the very first Valiant book I ever read. Um, and it, I think if I, if I hadn't read this one, I don't know if I would have had that same feeling because I was intimidated going into reading Valiant for the first time, reading this story, 
I felt like the writing immediately made me feel comfortable. It, this is a great, great example and, and one that I, I regularly recommend to people and is perfect for this type of show um, and for the purpose of this show. Yes, yeah, so that's a wild card pick. I might pick that up because you know me, I'm not a big, I won't say Valiant fan, I'm just not a big Valiant reader, but. I really think this story is, is one that you will like. It's got a little bit of that um, kind of Thor, ancient times element to it that you tend to like. Yeah. So again, for that Bone Parish giveaway, make sure you comment on this video. Let us know yes. what boom property you'd like to see optioned by, or one of the first properties would show up on Netflix, right? Yes, yes. Let us know. We want to know. And like Brian said, be on the lookout for that uh, top 10 Boom Studios list coming with, you know, the books that we like that we think are going to be heavily involved in this upcoming deal. Yeah. And also give us your recommendations. What are your favorite trade paperbacks to read? You never know. Might yep. just make this list. But either way, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.